say something about COVID-19 has uh, caused a lot of trouble in 2020, but what we just did, you just had our beloved uh, sister Dee Dee in Arizona delivering the, the meditation and it's expanded our congregation from our little Celebrate Life um, in the, it, and it's so wonderful when we're together in the, in our little church, but it's really done something. We, Dee Dee can participate if we're down, down in the thing without our electronics like we're doing now. And so this is a marvelous thing, even though it's painful to go through COVID. This is wonderful because Dee Dee just did that from Arizona. I think that's wonderful. Um, okay, this, uh, as most of you, uh, if you've been, um, I'm going to read because I, I have to stay on track when we're in the church. I usually do it extemporaneously, but um, for those of you who have heard my presentations on the principles of spiritualism, I've done about four. This is number five. Um, you might go back and look at those. They were in June 14th, June 28th, August 16th and November 22nd of last year. And to talk about each of the principles because it's very important for each of us to know what it is to be a spiritualist. That's why we read the principles every morning when we have a service so that we know that we're not exactly the same as all those other churches. We're very different and we need to know that. Most of us come from Christian background and so we have things that are hidden within us that we learned as children. And uh, those things that we learned uh, tend to influence us. So we need to know exactly what is it that we believe as spiritualists. And that's why I like to do these principles. And today we're going to talk about um, compensation and retribution hereafter, which is the most controversial principle in spiritualism, because it conflicts with what the rest of Christianity wants to believe. And it's also very appropriate because of where we are in the political world right now. We've all been witness to some strange and unnerving events over the past 11 days. An unloving person, when given enough rope, will always hang themselves and show their true colors. We've seen an outgoing president who has no conscience, who is a bully and a sore loser, actually incite an insurrection trying to overthrow our constitutional government just because he's a big baby who can't stand losing, which is something each of us had to learn in kindergarten. Yet, at the same time, we've also seen some excellent leadership from our new and incoming president-elect. Providence is giving us back the leadership we deserve. And Spirit reminded me yesterday of the fourth verse of the Star Spangled Banner, something that most of us know the first verse and we just don't know the last verse or the second verse. The fourth is often thought to be the second verse, but it's the fourth verse. But I'm going to recite it now. Oh, thus be it ever. <clears throat> Excuse me, I will get emotional because I took an oath as a sailor to defend my government, my constitution against all enemies, both foreign and domestic just like the senators and everyone else. We can defend the constitution. So I'm gonna read it. <clears throat> oh, thus be it ever when free men shall stand between their loved home and the war's desolation. Blessed with victory and peace, may the heaven rescued land praise the power that hath made and preserved us a nation then conquer we must, for our cause it is just, and this be our motto, in God is our trust. Now that's the last verse most people don't know. And heaven is absolutely rescuing our land. So our subject today, the spiritualist principle of compensation and retribution hereafter is extremely appropriate. Francis Banks, who speaks from the other side in that wonderful book, Testimony of Light, written by Helen Greaves in 1967, said these words, relax and allow spirit to stream through you. Swim in the tide of spirit. That is the great lesson that I am learning here on the other side as I review my mistakes now that I am in spirit. 
Now, this principle of compensation and retribution hereafter, taken together with the principle of personal responsibility, is what separates us from spiritualism. And it separates us from spiritualism from Christianity. It separates spiritualism from Christianity. And this is the sixth principle of the Spiritual National Union, the SNU, over in the United Kingdom and the British Commonwealth, where they state it this way. We recognize compensation and retribution hereafter for all the good and evil deeds done here on earth. Now, we Americans in the National Spiritualist Association of Churches, the NSAC, knowing that there is no divine judgment, are a bit less direct on the issue of retribution. And we say it this way in the sixth principle. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the golden rule. Do unto others that you would have them do unto you. And then in our seventh principle in the NSAC, we say, we affirm the moral responsibility of individuals and that we make our own happiness or unhappiness as we obey or disobey nature's physical and spiritual laws. But at the same time, we know that the law of compensation says, you reap what you sow. This who pays for your sin is so controversial, especially with some spiritualists and spiritists who choose to mix Christianity and spiritualism together. It's so controversial that the International Spiritualist Federation, the ISF, realizing the controversy it stirs up, remains silent on the issue of retribution. The International Spiritualist Foundation exists to promote the, and promote the advancement by educational means and the diffusion throughout the world of a knowledge of the science and philosophy of spiritualism slash spiritism and wants to bring together all spiritualists and spiritists, and consequently does not want the religion doctrines of the various branches to separate us. And while spiritualists and spiritists believe in the same phenomena of talking to the deceased, the spiritists, mostly in Portugal and Brazil, mix their beliefs with their former Catholic beliefs, similar to how the various Christian spiritualists here in the United States and in the English speaking countries mix these same beliefs together. Um, so the ISF therefore steers clear of all that by just not talking about it. But getting back to the main issue, let me simplify this doctrine originally stated by Jesus as, you reap what you sow. And by giving a, a question for you to ponder, how much retribution do Adolf Hitler and his cohorts deserve in the afterlife? How much punishment? How much retribution? Now, devout Catholics and devout Christians will quickly tell you that their belief says that if Adolf and his cohorts are believers, then Christ paid for their sins. But that certainly does not agree with what Jesus Christ actually said. You reap what you sow nor with our specific understanding as spiritualists of both the natural law of cause and effect and the principle of personal responsibility. Yet as we examine this controversy, I have to say, it is our duty as spiritualists to be sure of what we believe and to challenge our principles until we understand them. And the NSAC tells us this in the spiritualist manual, Quote, the Declaration of Principles adopted by the NSAC should be carefully read over, analyzed, criticized, and otherwise discussed until each one feels satisfied that he or she thoroughly understands them, and after that they may, prof be, may profitably be perfectly memorized. The SNU agrees with that and says, these principles are not intended to be binding rules of dogma. Rather, these principles should provide a moral and ethical framework upon which people can base their way of living. Further, Hudson Tuttle, an early seer in American spiritualism, stated that if spiritualists organize, and I break, break off here for a second, as we have done today in groups like the NSAC and the SNU and the ISF, then it, back to Hudson, it is because 
organization is the best method to reach desirable results and the means by which each received the combined strength of all. However, such organizations must be based on absolute personal freedom, an unquestioned right to individual opinion and action. And so far as the rights of others remain inviolate, there must be agreement to differ in what these principles mean to each of us. There must be agreement to differ. So we're not a doctrinal church saying, you have to agree with this verbatim just the way I see it. No, it's how you see it, your own way of seeing it. We agree to differ. We're together. We know that, that spiritualism, the phenomenon of spiritualism is true. And we agree to differ on our opinions of what the principles actually mean to each one of us in our own lives. So this is our motivation in providing this series on the spiritualist principles to understand why we believe what we believe as spiritualists and to convince ourselves of it. Now to answer the question about Hitler, which you may have been thinking on, the explanation by the SNU for this principle is helpful as it enlarges on this. The Spiritualist National Union in Great Britain said, this principle expresses the natural law of cause and effect. The law operates now here on earth as well as in the spirit world. As we move through life making choices, the outcome of those choices affects our soul's growth. When we leave this earthly life, there will be no divine judgment. We don't sit before the judgment throne of God. We will instead have the opportunity to reassess, to take stock and decide what we might have done differently. And also this reassessment has been scientifically verified most recently by the study of the near-death experience in which the life review is reported repeatedly by near-death experiencers. Although since these near-death experiencers are not making a final transition and are shortly returning to earth life, they only have time for a rapid review of their life. But when we make our final transition to eternity, we then have much more time to do this life review. And for some, due to their moral irresponsibility in this physical life, that searing review, I mean searing like you sear a steak, that searing review may take a very long time. Myself being raised as a Protestant Christian and still holding many hidden childhood indoctrinations, I was of course concerned to get this judgment of retro, this concept of retribution correctly, especially that bit about no divine judgment, after I've been taught that as a child. So in my extensive study of spiritualism and mediumship, I eventually came to the two books written by Francis Banks, where I found answers to this very question. Now, Francis Banks was an Anglican nun who worked in both South Africa and England, and she died in 1965. And her first book, Frontiers of Revelation was published three years before her death in November of 1962. And in that book, or 1965, I'm sorry, I got the number wrong there. And in that book, she reviews her life work of studying mediumship for the Anglican church and practicing it. And this text contains much detail, which is important here. But more important is her second book. And that's the one if you're going to get one of these books that you should go get. After she died, Francis wrote the second book. It was received completely from the other side through the mediumship of her dear friend, Helen Greaves, who had it published in 1967 and entitled The Testimony of Light. I've read both books and they're all written by Francis, believe me. And here Francis describes how our extended life review takes place in the afterlife, and especially about her own experience, and also working with a former Nazi and the Jewish mother that hated that Nazi for killing her husband and her children. And especially informative was how that Jewish mother was stuck with the Nazi until she got over her hatred. Francis was working with these two souls on the other side after her own near death in 1965, and it was more than 20 years after the Second World War. And both the Nazi and the Jewish mother were only just beginning their retribution reassessment work. 
they had been in the shadows. That's how Francis says it, in the shadows, since their deaths over 20 years before in our time. And of course, time's different on that side. But the Jewish woman's husband and children had been waiting for her over in what we call Summerland all this time. But she, the Jewish mother, could not move on to be with them until she got, gave up her hatred of the Nazi. Her hatred attached her to him. Now, Frances Banks says of her own reassessment process, somewhere in the depths of my mind, two blueprints are brought forward into my consciousness. One blueprint is the perfect idea with which my spirit bravely went into incarnation. The other is the resultant of our only partially understood plan, my life as it was actually lived. Now, first of all, my mind looks at the whole comparison and sees the blue, two blueprints side by side. This is the first shock. It's a true humbling of yourself to find that you did so little when you could have done so much. And during this experience, the whole cycle of your life term unfolds before you in a kaleidoscope series of pictures. And during this crisis, one seems to be entirely alone. Yours is the judgment. You are the accused and you are the judge and the jury. Francis goes on to say, this is a slow process. I progress slowly. I'm exactly the same person now. I still have to go over and over again in my mind, the possibilities that I have when I was on the earth the failures and the mistakes that I made in the light of this new approach, I still balk at admitting much that was perhaps reprehensible and which could have been managed without my human bungling. And this is where quite a few souls here in the afterlife have become immobilized. The, their pictures are so searing, like searing a steak, are so searing in their exposure but only when they have made the inner desire to right those wrongs will they be able to move on. They are prisoners of the self. So if you want to know more about this principle and how that reassessment works, do read Francis Banks' book, Testimony of Light, written by Helen Greaves. What we as spiritualists believe is mostly stated this way. Heaven or hell in the afterlife is entirely self-made. And you're literally building it right now here, one deed at a time. So consider that seventh principle of the NSAC, which says that we make our own happiness or unhappiness. And remember that we will all reap what we sow. We will reap more than we sow, and we will re reap it later than we sow, both here and hereafter. And that's what some of the politicians in Washington realize. We have a wonderful new president-elect coming in who gets this, and he tries to do the right thing every time. And we have a man going out who doesn't get this, but he'll find out later. So... Uh, compensation. That's what it's about. Thank you very much.